Hello, welcome to the Land of Kak Yak. My name is Laurel. So today I wanted to share with you our daily writing routine for my third grade student. Okay, where are we in the school year? Um, well, we are year round homeschoolers, so <laughs> we're just kind of doing our own thing at any given moment of the year. <laughs> and I'm um, definitely letting my child's um, abilities and skill level like lead me in what I'm offering him in his daily writing. So let me just show you where I start from. I always start in my planner, right? <laughs> okay, so I have made a document called my sequences. And so I'm just looking at my language arts section and he is in the third grade. So my skill goals for this year of course, a reading with teacher, his independent reading, his writing, which is he's got some copy work component because I'm still really look, looking at his handwriting improvement and uh, writing skills, uh, spelling and grammar. Every year, I feel like I fiddle with this all the time. I think by the time I get to my third son, I'll have it down perfect. <laughs> at least I, I'll think I will. I'm sure you're, but you're always kind of tweaking things to personalize them for that kid, you know? I try not to make myself insane and do uh, and like every year come up with a completely new plan. Like ugh, it makes me feel sick to my stomach just thinking about it. <laughs> I try to use what I have for the next kids coming up, but there has to be room to customize, right? For third grade for language arts. Okay. We're working in the McGuffey readers for his reading. He's got the RC reading list. He's also got some easy peasy readers and some other uh, book sets. Okay, McGuffey's third reader copy work. I'll show you that here shortly. This year, I wanted to introduce him to uh, writing cursive. Like he's been reading cursive in the McGuffey readers. They have those lessons every so often that they had their own cursive font in there. So I wanted him to be able to first just to be able to read it, right? But this year, we're trying our hand at writing. So I've got a shortcut to Danilian cursive, that workbook, um, and write a super sentence. That's a workbook I bought. These are all for writing skills. So this is basically, these two would be two different um, handwriting resources. This one could be print of a print version and a cursive version. And this is a cursive workbook. And then write a super sentence. I've got, uh, I don't think he and I, have, we have not done this one yet. Uh, we're working in his Ms. McGuffey spelling. And so, and then for grammar, we've got gentle grammar, books one and two, and a copywork compliment. I'll kind of show you how I'm blending kind of some of this stuff together for the writing. So I would say writing would be copywork, you know, grammar. And if we wanted to write a suit, do the write a super sentence this year, I think would be a good goal for me to get to at towards the end of the year. If I'm going to continue on on the like, more of the RC route of like copy work because you know RC the Robinson curriculum if you're unfamiliar recommends nothing but copy work until the age like about 10 and then they're supposed to start writing essays or I guess and then you could like start that journey on learning to write essays but I wanted to kind of start moving in that direction a little earlier but I still wanted to do some copy work one mostly just because it's so sustainable as far as homeschooling goes it's a no-brainer for me like today you're just going to do copy work <laughs> um the kids are still seeing you know, seeing um well structured you know perfect spelling and grammar modeled and uh, they're working on their handwriting and it's no stress for them like they're not having to it's kind of like a brain break a little bit like they're focusing in they're practicing that skill of like mainly handwriting it's also reinforcing their reading, you know, um, because I base our copy work off of what he's reading. They match. Yeah, sometimes I want to, I'm, I'm like, he's at that age where I'm like, we can start working in him coming up with his own writing a little bit more. I'll get more into detail uh, here in a second and show you that, what that looks like for us. So I used to have my stories and grammar resource in the, like the, as I said, third or fourth, it's for third or fourth grade. And I, and I tried it this year and I was like, um, he's not ready for that. <laughs> and it could be that it's just too early in the year. Like a lot happens in a year. A lot of growth happens. We are, what is this? This is November. We're just, uh, coming up on Thanksgiving this week. So, and he's young for his grade anyways. So, um, he didn't turn eight until... When's his birthday? September. 
like late September. So he's always young for his grade anyways. So I kicked that down to fourth grade if we we're going to do it. But we would do that in our fourth grade year. But I want to make sure if we do writing and rhetoric next year, start that series up, that he is ready for it. And what I'm seeing is that um, even though he's consistently been doing copy work and, you know, we read every day that when he has to write his own sentences, because I see his writing in some of his other assignments. I'll show you what I mean in a second. And so I can kind of see the strength of his ability, even just in uh, the mechanics of writing, like just like the uh, like grammar and spelling and stuff like that. I feel like he, he could tell you, like if I asked him, you know, like what needs to be capitalized in a sentence. I feel like he could tell me, but then he goes to write things and sometimes he doesn't do it. I think just because it takes, it's just a different part of your brain or it's like new to come up with your own, you know, piece of writing. And he's also needing a lot of, I noticed like um, sentence stems, you know, the beginning, you give him like the beginning of a sentence. And I'll show you, I'll show you some of that here in a second too. Just things I'm not, I'm observing. So I'm working with the student that I have, not um, the student that I think he should be, or this, you know, based on whatever you might, I might be basing that on. But I'm just trying to look at him actually as an individual, the student that I have, and where I feel is best to focus our energies. But I do have like multiple resources to pull from that I've already vetted. I mean, a lot of them I've tried out with his older brother. You know, bless him for being the oldest. <laughs> and having to go through all the trials with mom to pull from when I'm like, okay, I think we could try this now. And if it's it's okay, if my, like my story is a grammar, like I wrote that, like that's my resource. Um, and I was so excited to do it with him. That's probably why I started it probably a little too early because I was so excited to do it but he just wasn't really ready for it. It was more like me. It was turning into copy work. It was turning into me writing it out on the board and him just copying it down. I'm like, well, we could, we could just go back to copy work then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or I thought about doing it twice. I'm like, we could do it once through. So we're like talking through it. And he's familiar with all the ideas and then have him do it again more independently and see. But I was like, that's just, that's going to take a lot out of me. And I have other kids to school. Anyways, blah, 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 blah. Let's get into his schoolwork. Okay, if you've, if you've been following my channel for a while, you've probably seen this before. It's my language arts. Um, it's one of the weekly schedules for my McGuffey um, readers. Revised, this is the revised edition. There's an original too, if you have originals, but this is my language arts, like basically breaking down every day what I'm gonna do. And I built my language arts program really around his McGuffey reader. Again, this can be customized if it's a good like starting point, but this is what this is literally what I'm doing with him. So for writing, you'll see he's in the third reader now, so that's my level four. And for writing, we've got matching lesson copy work. And then I, you know, I check it. So that's just straight writing. But then for grammar, right? I said I had stories and grammar or copy work complement. I am actually changing this to right now, gentle grammar. And uh, we are just doing uh, level one right now, or book one. So see, even I, even I, change things up for my own, <laughs> for my own kids. Okay, so there's my basic plan, right? Okay, so what he's technically doing right now is he's we're alternating copy work, his cursive copy work, and gentle grammar lessons in his everything notebook. I kind of customized his everything notebook because I wanted it to have some of the other like worksheets specifically. So I'll link to that video in the description box if you wanna see how I customized it. And I'll make a new one when I customize it for when this one's done. So I already have some thoughts about how I'm going to like customize it just a little bit differently for the next time, but I'll make a video on that when, that, when I do that. Okay, so the, everything, the idea about the everything notebook is that there's a page for everything. Okay. So let's just talk about writing. So just like I was saying, things that he needed a sentence stem for, I was finding, I'm finding that quite often in the reading journal. 
So, I mean, I could simplify this. Like, again, he's a young third grader, so I could just do this. I could just have him, I've told him sometimes, I'm like, just go ahead and draw a picture sometimes. Like, if he's really getting stuck and doesn't know how to start a sentence or, like, come up with an answer, I'm like, just write down something and give me a picture. <laughs> because I don't want to make this the point of stress for writing. I don't want to make it, you know, more than it needs to be. But I just went through and I just highlighted, you know, down the list on each day for him so he knows... He could ask himself this, you know, whatever question. If he feels like he doesn't have a good answer, it doesn't apply. I'm like, just write down something that happened and what you read today and draw me a picture. <laughs> okay, here's the writing journal page. This is a copywork page. It's just, we're alternating copywork, gentle grammar, copywork, gentle grammar, day to day. So he did do a good job of doing his indent for his paragraph. That, I'm getting this cop, uh, the copywork actually from here. And I, I mean, when I originally printed this out and made it, I intended for him just to see, he started out just by writing straight in it. Here's, a, sometimes here's an example of us doing some of our grammar complement to our copywork where we're just looking for specific things and color coding them. But he wanted to do the everything notebook I first thought we could just use it kind of like a textbook and he could just open it up to the lesson we're reading in his McGuffey reader and he could do it straight into here. So he was just looking here and like copying it. It is helpful to have these like handwriting lines with the dashes and everything. Uh, and being new to it, I was like, oh, I kind of want him to, I was like, how do I solve this? This is one of the things I'm going to customize more in his next uh, everything notebook that I compile. So I'm going to put these pages into here. But okay, so recently we've just gone to doing this where I just, we just rip out a page for him to do for his copy work so that he can actually have him trace it and try to write it. This is kind of like training his hand a little bit, right? And then he gets his shot at it and a little more training and then he gets a shot at it. It actually is getting better. I can see it improving. So it, it's better when he does it with the lines because then I have a reference to talk about, you know, you don't want your M's, your little M's to go past the dotted line or whatever, right? And then he does enjoy just, we have him cut it out a little bit, you know, so that it trims it down, then we just tape it in. The other thing that we are working with is the gentle grammar right now. And this has just been a win, these two, this has been a winning combination for us. I, and I do just go through and I, you know, we highlight, I do copy work one day, sentences the next. Copy work one day, sentences the next. He's obviously not to, at the paragraph level yet, but one day when we get to paragraphs, like, you know, writing his own, I'll do, you know, that. Or his, or some kind of resource I use with it. So, um, gentle grammar. You can get, this one just happened. This is book one. This is, um, I already had um, the ones that Sherry makes from Mom Delights. This is like the ones that you buy off of Amazon. And I buy these, I just use these like textbooks so they don't get, you know, used up. And there's, you know, four of them. Here's the one that Everett had. But there was another, there's another Etsy seller who made just, just the book one. And she had made it with those handwriting lines in it. And she'd used a font that's similar to the font that I, that it's, it's not Denillion, but it's, it's more similar to it. it. looks more like a handwriting font. And I thought I might have the kids use this, um, so that they could have those handwriting lines and kind of more of a handwriting model. But, um, I ended up just using it for, again, as my own, um, textbook where I just have them, him do the exercises in here. Okay, so which one was this? This was Gentle Grammar Lesson 13. So what I've gone to is a lot of dictation. So it's think of your cat, write six questions about it, use these words, this and the questions, then change the questions you've written into statements. So that was what we did here. I think this was a continuation of Lesson 12. We just finished it up. Um, but when that we did 13 here, so here's his statements and here's his questions. So for this one, he did this on his own, right? He just looked at these and made his own. 
And then, you know, I told him he uses the sentence uh, writing checklist. And so I have a sentence checklist and a paragraph checklist, but he's just on the sentence level. I just told him just to check down to item six. And so then he was able to check it himself. You can see he put an X because he realized he didn't capitalize proper nouns or something. I don't know why he gave himself an X because he doesn't have any proper nouns. <laughs> I think he did it because he didn't capitalize the, yeah, he didn't capitalize the first. I think he meant this. He didn't start with a capital um, when he did the does. I think he meant to, he didn't do it for that because I can tell he erased it and went back and did capital D's. Um, so he did that on his own and then I checked it and then, you know, any mistakes, you know, I saw I pointed out and I just had him fix them. You can see we were talking about the difference between a capital K and lowercase k's. I said, that's a capital. I would accept either one of these lower cases, but they have to look different. Just because his K's and kitten was looking like an uppercase. And I kind of noticed an issue with his G's and Y's um, with the little tail. So I was giving him some, we were talking through the models on there. Let's see another one. Another day we did that was, let's go back a day or two. So this was a dictation day. So this is lesson 12. So I just wrote to myself that I dictated this. The way I do dictation is the way that um, writing and rhetoric says to do it. So since you know we're, we're gonna be using that program in the future, I'm just gonna dictate that way now. So they say to, you just read the sentence one time, just normal, and then you read it again slowly, with any um, punctuations or like I, I include any spellings. I'm pretty sure he doesn't know how to spell as well. I tell him, you know, make sure things, whatever, certain things are capitalized or whatever. So you would say something like this. You'd say, I see a cat and her kitten. I see a cat and her kitten. Kitten has two T's period. And then I usually will say it one more time just so he can go back and check it, make sure he didn't lose anything. I see a cat and her kitten, period. So that's how I do dictation. And then I move on to the next one. And then we just went through and talked about, like I just, right now, one of the things it's on our list, right? Is did you space your words apart evenly? Are words written on the line? So he does a good job of writing on the line. But sometimes he's not accurate with his spacing, like a little big space, and then other things will be really close together. And he also has a habit of like writing the first word really big and then getting tinier and tinier. I think it's because he's trying really hard to write really neatly. And so he starts getting really tight with his writing. And so, um, yeah, I think I remember this specifically this day. There was like a couple, like, sentences, a couple words he had to rewrite numerous times because he kept just writing tinier and tinier. I'm like, your words need to be about the same size. That's something that having my eye on is helpful, you know, to keep an eye on it. But that would be something also that's helpful if you were using lines, right? Because you could say, they could, if you remind them all the time that, you know, these letters have to come up to that middle line. And that's, it's just a good reference for them. But he's been using lines for the last, you know, three years or something at school. So that's why when I made these specifically, I didn't put those in here because I thought, okay, by this age, it's time to start knowing, you know, your hand should know by now how what size the letters are supposed to be and stuff like that. So He's in that transitional moving from like the K through two, you know, um, copy work that was getting progressively smaller, but he still had the guideline, you know, lined paper to, okay, now you should be, now you're going to give it a go at doing it on your own, but he's getting a lot of feedback from me, but he's taking it really well. And in, in these, the beauty of this is this is really fast. I mean, this really doesn't take a super long time. It's like short, but like focused and quality. And the nice thing about gentle grammar is, so it's, it's focusing on something specific. So they'll be like, you know, introducing the question mark, which all this stuff he's already familiar with, but it doesn't hurt to practice it again. Some things I do do, um, 
our copy work compliment, like, like our grammar compliment. I'll show you that same idea if you're familiar with that resource I've used before with just as copy work. Like here's, here's just me giving him some feedback on, it was um, spelling, but now because I, for the sake of time, I just spell it for him. Okay, here's an example of copy work, compliment idea, but with the gentle grammar, you could, cause you can do this with anything. And that was to look for nouns, adjectives, and verbs. So I just, you know, we created a little color coded key and then I had him just make little dots over, okay, first find all the nouns. He put that dotted, you know, color from his highlighter. All the adjectives got that color and all the verbs got that color. And we talked about is being, um, is it, I asked him, is it an action or is it a state of being, right? It was a, it's a state of being verb. So we just kind of went over was is the past tense, is is the present tense, will be is the future tense. Like those are the, so was, is, will be all mean the same thing. It, they are the state of being verb, but we just kind of, I'm just kind of talking to him about these tell you if it's what's happening is in the past in the present or in the future. Oh, and then we played, um, we made some sentences just using some flashcards. Um, I think I just had this set. I'll link these for you. I think I got these on Amazon. You can do like two adjectives, one noun, one verb, and one conjunction word. And th that's, I got the idea out of the flashcard set. But they have different ways. If you have time, <clears throat> you just divide everything up into the verbs. Okay, like verbs over here, nouns, conjunctions, and adjectives. Just like mix it up and you say, okay, draw two adjectives, right? And they've got the A on there. Two adjectives and draw one noun. Okay, there's a noun, uh, one verb in one conjunction, right? So then we just wrote what, what those were that he drew and then he just arranged them into a sentence and then wrote it down. So shy and gentle, right? So you could say shy and gentle pigs hide. And you could write that down. That's just, a, that's just a statement, right? We talked about what that is. The statement is end with a period. If you switch or if you go hide shy and gentle pigs. Now it, it still ends with a period, but now it's a command. Just a different kind of sentence. And if you put an exclamation point on it, it would sound like, hi, shy and gentle pigs. <laughs> you could do it, shy and gentle pigs hide, you know, like hide too, right? So it was kind of fun. We just showed how you can make sentences. It's just fun. Makes makes things, because um, they kind of come out a little silly, but it makes them a little more game-like, right? So you can always do that at the end of, if you know, especially when your gentle grammar goes by really fast because they're just short and sweet little lessons. And you're like, okay, we have time for a little bit more practice. Then that's kind of a fun option. And you can do the same thing on copy work days. Let's go see if I found. Here's another copy work day where he was just copying straight into here. And I just used my highlighter to kind of point out things that needed to be practiced a little bit. I would, this is just the sign for par this paragraph. This should have been a new paragraph, should have been like indented. Um, but I just kind of showed him um, how O's, W's, V's, and B's, they don't come back down and connect at the bottom, right? They come off like the middle and attach to the next letter um, at their top, like oat, O-A-T, right? He was writing it like O down A T, more like that. You know, just practice. That's something we're working on. I'm keeping my eye on it um, as we go. Okay, and then, you know, I feel like you don't have to do tons and tons of really intensive writing because for us anyways, because I feel like he's doing quite a bit of writing in his other other subjects. Like here's his astronomy, his science page. Well, I have him, he's doing copy work straight out of his astronomy book for definitions, right? So we're focusing on him copying just as, you know, word for word and to spell correctly and stuff like that. So I, that, and that's something he can do completely independently without me. And I just check it at the end. 
And then again, with the copy work, you can do that same thing that we just did with the gentle grammar. If you have a copy work page, see here's another one where we did that, uh, we made a key. This time I wanted him to identify um, interrogatory, declarative uh, sentences, and we also added in prepositions and articles. But you can do that with your regular like copy work, right? You could make yourself a little key along the top and have them find that stuff in your copy work if you do copy work. So what I was saying about sentence stems, where I am finding that to be helpful is in response questions, like to reading. So what I'm trying to introduce is writing in complete sentences, not giving answers just in a phrase. And I, and I always try to explain that as writing in a way that if somebody only saw your answer, they would know what the question was. I'll give you an example because I usually write them like on the board for him. Okay, so this will be his next reading day. Okay, what did he do last time? He did. Okay, here's one we did. It says, who is the narrator? Tell about them. He wasn't sure how to, we had to talk about what is a narrator uh, for this part. So I think I just wrote on the board for him. This story, we talked about it being this story is narrated by dot 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 and I would just write that something like that on the chalkboard and so then he copies this part and then he keeps going what did he actually write he actually wrote this story is written in the third person using a storyteller to narrate that's what he wrote okay let's see what his next one's gonna be why did the author write this, do you think? So a good sentence stem for this one would be, I think the author wrote this book to dot, 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 right? So then I'm giving him his, his sentence stem and he could copy that and he could keep writing if he was having trouble knowing how to write a response in a complete sentence. Okay, so let's kind of put, let's. Put this over, overall thing, let's put this together. He has alternating days, copy work, and gentle grammar. On both of those, he can do a grammar compliment where he makes his a key, a color-coded key, and identifies those parts of speech within his writing that he's doing. He gets feedback from me, and he has to do any corrections. On uh, either day, if there's time, we can play making a sentence with these flashcards, which he enjoys, especially the, the sillier, the better. I monitor his writing in his other subjects, but not as closely. But I do sometimes give, um, kind of like a, as a scaffold, a sentence stem to get him started on reading response questions, especially. So he's coming along. He's, I mean, I feel like repetition is everything, <laughs> you know, it's just, I'll keep giving him sentence stems until he doesn't need them anymore. You know, uh, I may pull back and not offer, so, like stop offering them to him after a while or just waiting in, in, in if he has trouble getting started, let him ask me. I don't know how to start my sentence, but he's got to start figuring that out for himself. So I am slowly, my, the plan is just to slowly withdraw prompts and expecting him to do it himself. And if he struggles with it, or if he gives me something that is not a complete sentence, then I will say, that's not a complete sentence. How could you make it a complete sentence? So that I know what was asked just by reading the question. And if that little mental prompt doesn't get it to him, then I'll just give him the sentence stem. So I, I've been thinking about maybe I should just make a cheat sheet of sentence stems that go with all his reading response questions. I might do that so that if he needs it, he can refer to it and just stick it in his book or something. But anyways, if I do make that, I'll offer it as a freebie to you guys. So tell me if you would be interested in sentence stems for reading response questions that go with the everything notebook, uh, reading response questions, and I'll make that and put it uh, I'll, in, up in the next video. Well, I hope this video was helpful to anybody that was like maybe looking for ideas or just kind of thinking, trying to think through or make plans for their writing plan for their kids. And I'll just say this is working really well for us right now. And if I make any changes, 
you'll see another video. <laughs> okay, happy homeschooling.